How much do I actually need to retire comfortably in Australia? Well, the Australian Association of Super Funds estimates that for a couple to be comfortable in Australia, we need about $72,000 per year per couple. BDO, the accounting advisory firm, estimates that for a luxury retirement, we need about $150,000, and that is per couple per year. Now, these are just exactly that, estimates. They are not based on your lifestyle, which is why it's so important to consider exactly what you're going to spend. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat finance planner here in Singapore. And today I'm sharing with you five of the most commonly overlooked retirement expenses when it comes to planning for how much you will need when you actually decide to hang off the boots. Now, number one that is so commonly overlooked is the cost of replacing vehicles. Now, for some people, they couldn't care less about cars, as long as it goes, as long as it gets them to the beach or the shops or the airport or wherever they need to go, that's absolutely fine. But for others, they want to be able to replace their car and they want to have one each with their husband or their wife. And that's going to come at a cost of about $100,000 or $150,000 every time those cars are replaced. Well, if we want to replace those cars every three or four or five years, that could be an extra thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 every year we need to plan for in our retirement spending. So certainly consider the cost of vehicles when it comes to our retirement planning. Number two is the cost of holidays and especially overseas holidays. Again, a lot of people take these estimate numbers, 70,000, 150,000 and say, great, that's based on two overseas trips per year. I like overseas trips. I'd like to do them twice a year. I've therefore got enough money which is complete nonsense because your idea of an overseas trip and my idea of an overseas trip and somebody else's could be completely different in terms of what we spend. Some people might spend $5,000 and be perfectly happy. For others, that might not even cover one airfare. So consider exactly how much you're going to spend on travel each and every year, both domestically, if you're going to travel within Australia, and of course, overseas. Number three, the cost of clubs and memberships and regular donations or regular subscriptions that you plan to make in retirement. Now you might plan to join a private club. It might be a dining club. It might be a golf club. It might be Rotary. It might be a Lions club. It might be something else altogether, but often these clubs come with annual memberships, annual fees, dues, sponsorships, meal costs, meeting costs, whatever it might be. But these things need to be factored in. If you're joining a private club, for example, there could be an annual fee and there could be a minimum spend every month. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't do these things. You absolutely should enjoy your retirement, but consider how much they're going to cost and build that in to your retirement numbers. Number four is insurance costs. Now, I'm not talking about your health insurance here. Most people give some thought to the health insurance, but the ones that often catch people by surprise are the insurance for their house or for their investment properties. If you're living in a flood prone or fire prone area, particularly in Australia at the moment, we're getting some extreme weather right across the country. You may find that your insurance premium has gone from $800 a decade ago to thousands today, and it may very well continue to climb. Now, if you're in a flood prone or really fire prone area, you may even find that the cost of insurance becomes so prohibitive that you have to effectively self insure. Now that of course comes with its own risks and you need to be thinking about a cash buffer or of course the alternative to sell the place and move somewhere else, which obviously carries another set of costs. Now the final cost that is so often overlooked in retirement is land tax. Now, yes, it is a bit of a lazy tax in Australia, but it isn't going anywhere anytime soon based on what we currently know. And it's payable on your investment properties. So if you're building up a property portfolio to provide for your retirement later on, as the value of your land increases on those investment properties, the land tax bill will also. So if you are planning around how you build your property portfolio, start thinking through the ownership structures of those properties. Do you own them jointly? Do you own them via a trust, a company, some other structure 
to allow you more of a tax-free threshold when it comes to land tax. Or at the very least, make sure that you have the funds available, you've built that into your budget, and you're ready for those expenses when you do retire. So there you have it, five commonly overlooked costs when it comes to retirement planning. Run your own numbers, crunch your own budget, and work out exactly how much you're going to need when you do decide to retire.